Hello there. You clicked on this video because you're thinking about starting up fly fishing. So what we're gonna cover in this video are very basic fundamentals of getting started with the fly fishing. So if you've been doing it a year, you might pick up a few nuggets, but this really is for somebody that's like thinking, you know what, I might give fly fishing a try. So I guess we should start out with the fly rod, right? You do need a fly rod to start fly fishing. And there are a lot of different weights of fly rods and some of them are specific to certain fisheries. So depending on what you're going after, like in this case, I'm going after trout. Typically what you want to get for trout is a five or a six weight. That is a great all around fly rod for most sizes of trout. I happen to like using the five weights. Some people like using the six weights. Some even go with a four weight. They like a little lighter rod, but either way, a five or six weight is going to be perfect. You're going to be able to throw nymphs. You're going to be able to throw streamers with relative ease using a five weight fly rod. Length, length is also important. Corlin's got a setup that's about eight feet long. It's a great setup, I've used it before. If you're looking for a fly rod, a good fly rod on a budget, the Cortland setup really is a great value, right? It's under $100 for the entire setup, which includes line. And we'll go over that as well. But what I've been using since day one is a nine foot fly rod. The longer fly rod just helps a little bit with accuracy and casting. So it's just kind of my preference to go with something that's nine feet long. My fly rods are also four pieces. They're not gonna fall apart. Occasionally you gotta check the ferrules to make sure they're, they're tight after casting all day long. But I don't go with a two piece anymore because they're just harder to travel with. A four piece breaks down very small and it's easier to travel with. So if you're going for larger species, like if you're going for bass, you might wanna level up to a six or a seven weight because typically the flies that you're throwing are really heavy and you need a little stouter rod. So now we covered the fly rod, you're gonna need a fly reel. Now this particular reel right here, this is old school. This is an old bat and kill from Orvis. I just really like these reels. And I like the large arbor for two reasons. One is when you reel in the line, you get more line in with each rotation. And also the larger spool kind of keeps the coiling that happens with the fly line to a minimum, something tighter than that. You get a lot of coiling and you're reeling, reeling, reeling just to get a little bit of gain on the fish. So I prefer the large Arbor fly reels. There's some great reels out there from Orvis. Lamson makes a really good fly reel that is value, right? You can get a great fly reel for right around a hundred bucks. Ross reel also makes some great fly reels. And on that fly reel, you're gonna need fly line. I just, I just noticed that I, I don't have my reel tightened. You do need to make sure that you tighten your reel onto your fly rod because you will lose your reel and it'll only happen when you have a big fish on and that's just the inevitability. So make sure that's tight. Rookie mistake. Anyway, you're gonna need a fly line. So there are a ton of different fly lines out there, right? Some of it's marketing, right? They literally have a fly line for any type of species or any type of fishing that you're doing. But what I have found is if you go with kind of an all-purpose fly line and it's the one I use is from Cortland it's called finesse trout 2 it can throw a streamer like in this case I've got a sink tip and a streamer on and it can throw a dry fly it can throw a nymph setup so it's a great all-purpose fly line for trout so you're gonna need that so now we talked about fly line right what goes on the end of the fly line well in this case I've got a sink tip and we'll talk about that later it's an accessory that you can get but you're going to need a tapered leader. And what's different than your typical line that you put on a regular spinning reel is the taper, it's thick towards the top where it hooks onto the fly line and gets thin down into what's called the tippet area on the fly line. Typically what you're gonna wanna get is nine foot tapered leaders. Generally, they come in two different ways. They come in a nylon pack, which is kind of a monofilament, and they come in a fluorocarbon, which are stronger and more abrasive resistant. Typically, you can go with the nylon in most cases and be okay and it'll cover most things. You're gonna notice on these tapered leaders that you have what's called a 5X, a 4X, a 3X, a 2X. Basically, what the X stands for, the 1X, the 0X, the 3X, the 5X, is the diameter of the line itself. You'll notice that on your spinning reel right now, 
if you've got like a 10 pound test, it's pretty thick. It's generally too thick for tying on most of these smaller flies. So these lines are engineered to give you some strength with a smaller diameter. The number is also associated with the strength. So a 5X tapered leader is gonna have a smaller diameter and it's going to be lighter in strength, right around six pounds. Versus a 3X, it's gonna be a little bit heavier in diameter, a little thicker diameter, but it's also gonna be right around a 10 pound test, roughly. So the lower the number, the thicker the diameter of the fly line, the stronger the fly line. So if you have, if you're starting with 7X, that is super thin, like almost hair-like and super light, like three to four pound test, all the way to a 0X, which could be 20 pound test and pretty darn thick. So the X stands for the diameter of the line, which is also associated with the strength. The lower the number, the stronger the line, the thicker the line. Hope that makes sense. But if you're looking for kind of an all-purpose weight, pick up some 5X, 4X, and 3X, and that's gonna cover 90% of what you're gonna be doing with trout fishing. The next thing you're gonna need is a roll of tippet. And why you need a roll of tippet is this tapered leader as you're tying on flies is gonna continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter. You're gonna need to add on some tippet material when you start getting into the thicker part of the taper. You don't wanna start tying on flies if you have something that looks like 20 pound test. Or in this case, you can see I have another setup here. I'm fishing two flies. I've got a nymph on top and I've got a little squirmy wormy on the bottom. And you're gonna need tippet material for that length in between those two flies. So it's good to have that in your, in your bag as well. And speaking of which, you're gonna need something to carry all of your gear in. So what I prefer, I love these slim, these sling packs. These sling packs are ergonomic. They just feel good, right? They don't weigh me down. You can get a fly vest, but I find that that starts to hurt my shoulders and neck. You can get a fanny pack, but I find that that's limited in the amount of stuff that you can put in it. So the sling packs have really done well for me. And it, it just kind of allows for a real easy access to your stuff. Let me show you how easy that is. You just unclip this and I've got a second fly rod here in this little holder. Move that down and I just spin this around like this. And now I've got easy access to everything that I need um, when I'm fishing. So what do you need besides the fly rod, the fly reel, the line, and the tapered leaders that you have on there as well? So you're gonna need flies, right? So there are a ton of boxes you can choose. And I am terrible at overpacking. So I've got a big box here that I put my streamers in, which is a freaking mess. I've got a smaller box here that I've got my small balance leeches in and, and some woolly buggers and also a big mess. I've got boxes here. These are magnetic, so it kind of helps keep these small dry flies in place. But there are a lot of different boxes that you can choose from. It's not, it's not a one size fits all. So it's kind of your preference but you're gonna need some fly boxes to put your flies on. And I'll leave in the link in the description on some of my uh, top flies as well that I use typically when I'm fishing for trap. So the next compartment has my forceps. You're gonna wanna get a pair of forceps, especially if you get a fly down in the fish's mouth, you're gonna wanna be able to take it out. And also I have the cutters right here. That makes a big difference. Don't use your teeth, even though I have a bad habit of using my teeth often. When you're cutting line, Use the cutting portion, it's just gonna make your dentist a lot happier. You know what that little point is there on your cutter? A lot of times if you tie your own flies or even the store-bought flies, there's glue in the eye hole and that's what you use to kind of clear that out. Then I've got some indicators as well. So what indicators are, essentially they're strike indicators or bobbers. So what you're using today, spin fishing or bobbers, these are just a fancy bobber that go onto your line. But really what sets these apart is they're super lightweight, so they don't affect the casting. And you can see there's some really small ones in here. I do have an old school wool one, which I haven't used in a while because it gets waterlogged. But these Oral's indicators have been really good, good for me because they don't tangle up the line. They're super lightweight and they float really well. So if you're using something that needs to have a controlled depth, that's when you're gonna put an indicator on. If you're using a streamer, you're generally not using indicators. You're just stripping that back behind the fly line. So you're gonna need some indicators. 
So here are the rolls of tippet, right? Here's a roll of 4X tippet. Another roll of 4X tippet. These two are different as you can see. This is more of a nylon for floating. This is more of a carbon, a fluorocarbon, not carbon fiber, a chlorofluorocarbon. This sinks better. So a lot of times on my streamers, I'm using fluorocarbon because it's a little bit stronger and it sinks better. And if I'm using dry flies, I'm using a nylon line. That's why I have both. But you're gonna wanna get rolls of tippet to match. If you're dry fly fishing, you're gonna need something to keep that thing afloat. So there's something called dry shake. This is what you use right here. Just kind of gets the water out. It's almost like dry air. And what really works for me is what's called Viagra. Flyagra, not Viagra, Flyagra. This stuff is like a silicone coating. And man, once you once your donkey flies into that, then they're gonna be floating for hours. So it's a great, great accessory to have. All right, so we covered the fly rod, the fly reel, the line, the tapered leaders, tippet material, fly boxes, flies, something to carry them in. Well, now you're gonna need something to net the fish, right? So I've got a net. I like these, and I would encourage you to get the catch and release nets. What that is, it's, as you can see, it's kind of a rubberized netting material. It's not nylon. Nylon has a tendency to be rough on the fish. And if you're fishing fisheries that are catch and release, it's just nice to have this type of netting. And honestly, you know, the flies don't get stuck in them. It's, it's just a better material. The nylon, as soon as you get a fly, especially if it's barbed in a nylon netting, you're never getting that thing out. So having the rubberized netting is, is very convenient. I have a net from Hellbender. It's just a small family owned company that makes these custom nets, but you can go, you know, to any of the sporting goods store and get a net for yourself. Look for weight, right? I've got mine hanging off both a magnet and a, um, a waiting staff lanyard which works well, keeps it up, but I just keep it right here so it's accessible whenever I wanna net a fish. You're gonna need a net as well. So circling back to the fly. So one of the things that I picked up recently is fly tying. I'm not very good at it, but there is something special about tying something up yourself and then catching a fish with something you tie. That is a whole big giant rabbit hole that you can go down if you start tying your own flies, but it is very fulfilling. There is an argument some people say, you know, you buy the materials and you can you can tie a dozen flies and it's going to be a lot less than what you can buy them in the fly shop. But then once you get into it, you start buying more material, more material, and it's just you're spending a lot of money on different materials and vices and tools and everything else. And it, be, it can become a very expensive habit. But if you kind of keep control on it, buy a basic vice, some things that you know that might make a pretty good fly, try tying one up. But typically... I support my local fly shops. I was just there at Reds today and bought a bunch of flies because I want to invest my time in fly fishing, not necessarily always fly tying, but that's something you can do later on or pick it up right away because it is pretty cool when you catch a fish on your own fly. So if you're out on your favorite river, even shore fishing in a lake, in the colder months, you are going to need a pair of waders. Now, this is where a big expense can come into play when it comes to waders. So I have chosen Drift. Drift is a family owned company. They're a great waiter that are reasonably priced, but they're still on the expensive side. You're still gonna spend between $350 and $600 for a pair of waiters. If you don't know, right? If you don't know if you're gonna stick with this, you can buy a really cheapy pair. Hodgman has a pretty good pair of waiters. I mean, pretty good meaning they're gonna last you maybe a season. And there are some other cheaper options out there at the, at the discount stores. But if you know you're gonna stick with it, I would choose a brand that you know that are gonna last a long time. And for that, for, for me, that's that's Drip. That's why I chose Drip, they're a great waiter. But there are tons out there. Sims makes a great waiter. Frog Tog makes a good waiter. Grundon's now just started making waiters. Patagonia makes waiters. I know I'm miss, missing a bunch, but there is a ton of options out there. Uh, Squala just started making waiters and they're all over different price points, but choose what's best for you based off of your budget. But also understand if you choose the cheaper ones, they're probably only gonna last one or two seasons. So it's one of those things that might be worth making an investment in. Next is you're gonna need wading boots. Now I've chosen corkers. Some people hate them because of the removable soles. Some people love them. I'm one of the people that love corkers because I love the flexibility that this boot gives, right? Right now I'm wearing spikes because I don't need felts. I get plenty of traction. I'm not gonna slip on wet grass. I love it. If that's not the case, right, and I need something a little more delicate, 
I put felts on. If I'm gonna be hiking a long ways, I put the rubber uh, boots on and, or the rubber soles on. And I can carry along a set of felts or the spikes for whenever I get to my destination. So I love the diversity that corkers give with all the different sole options. But again, there's a ton of options out there for you. It doesn't have to be corkers, but check out your local fly shops. Usually they have probably three to four brands to choose from in stock at any time. And now finally, the last pro tip I'm gonna give you is when it comes to the hook sets with a fly rod. You have to be a little more delicate. You wanna be fast with some power, but not too much power. A lot of new fly fishers, the first thing they do is do a great big hook set and they're snapping off fish. So be super careful when you first start landing fish or hooking into fish, you need to be quick, quick on the hook set, but not too much power. Right when you start feeling the fish wanna run, let her run. And here comes the train.